Holly's Getting Coffee. My name is Alice James, and today we're at Chill with Arms, ooh la la, and I am with Chris Reese of Reese Leisure. I always said Chris Reese Leisure then. Easy for you to say, yeah. Easy. There's lots of Reese's and Eases and Leisure's. You're very arrogant naming the company after yourself, aren't you? I, as I have done myself, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> no comment, no comment. So, what do you do? Tell us all about it. Good question. So, um, in Reese Leisure, we've got a number of different sporting businesses. We've got a swim school uh, where we train children from three years up to 73 years old how to swim. Oh, nice. If you're 74, you can still apply to go swimming, but there's um, a whole mixture of ages but mainly children swimming and then we have a triathlon business called try try getting okay. people to get into the sport of triathlon wow and then uh, probably the one that we're most well known for is the uh, marathon so the abp Southampton marathon wow amazing i oh, know and you've done all those events haven't you? i have <laughs> i particularly did i've done the marathon like five times now i'm sure i've seen it at the finish time yeah. every time yeah i was there five days late <laughs> i finished don't take a long time <laughs> So, um, do you come from a sporting background? Is that how you got into this? Can you not tell from my so ripped, physique and all the swimming <laughs> and everything else? Uh, no, I don't actually. I okay. come from a, um, a not a non-sporting background, but I was a lifeguard when I was 15, 16 years old, uh -huh. sat on poolside, thought the swimming teaching looked easy, thought I'd give it a go. <laughs> And then went from there and suddenly I was 18 and setting up a swim school and oh, then cool. all of a sudden, 15 years later, we've got 76 swimming teachers, a thousand swimmers, we've wow. got the largest running event in Southampton, we've got the Winchester Half Marathon, we've had thousands of people coming through our doors to come and take part in our event, which is quite exciting. That is amazing. And it's nice to do something around this area because it's all linked into wealth being and well being and health, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah, so we, we try and do things. So with the swimming, we've encouraged people to get into the water, get over your fears it's such an important life skill as well mm. so if you can start from a young age from about three years old and just get into that kind of habit mm. it just opens so many doors for later on so you can yeah. go into kayaking sailing just being comfortable on the waterfront yeah. being comfortable down by the sea when you're on holiday it just it calms parents nerves and they know their children can swim which is always yeah. a good thing so absolutely yeah. i love it so in terms of the marathon then that um has been astronomically successful that's a big word. Astronomical is a big word, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it has surprised us how successful it's been. Mm. Um, Southampton has got such a huge running community. It's a very strange city because we've got, I think we're the fifth or sixth most obese city in the country. But wow. then we've also got the second largest park run. So we've got, you know, quite a, really? quite a diverse mixture yeah. of people in the city, shall we say. Mm. So um, we, were, well, in fact, I lived in Southampton at the time and I was looking for a half marathon to do. And I thought, which is crazy. Why has mm. Southampton not got one? Went to the council and said, do you mind if I put it on? And they said, it's going to take a bit of planning. And we put together all these different bits and pieces. And I basically pulled out this map of Southampton and went, I want to go past the Bargate, want to go past the Common, want yeah. to go over the Itchen Bridge, go to the far side of the city. Just yeah. did all these crosses and then did a dot to dot to see how we can make it work. And just magically, it was 13.1 miles. Oh, how funny. It wasn't. It was six months of... <laughs> It was six months of hard work and planning oh and my God. changing routes and going past here and going past there. It was, yeah, absolute yeah. chaos. And then the city is a very, um, what's the word? It's a, it's a growing city. So yeah. every year there's a new building that pops up. There's a street mm. that changes. There's a new business that's opened up that we haven't spoken to previously. Yeah. So it's a very dynamic city, but I just love it. It's a cool, very And what an amazing city. opportunity that you were just like, hi, can I do this? Yeah, that made it sound simpler than it actually was. There's quite a few forms and quite a few <laughs> meetings to go through. I uh, had to go in front of the um, all the councillors of the city, so I sat in the big council chamber there for one of their big oh, official yeah, meetings fancy. talking about it. And of course, you've got the concerns about what's going to happen with road closures, mm. movement of people around the city. And uh, in our first um, route that we proposed, we were closing four of the five bridges from east to west from the city. So there was oh kind of gosh. complications of how we get yeah, the route yeah. round. But we use underpasses we use one-way streets we're quite clever with how the route actually works yeah. in terms of getting in and out of the city you could actually come shop into West Quay drive in one part of the city when the marathon's on have absolutely no idea there's 10,000 people running around the city oh go shop and have your coffee and yeah. then head back out and you're all fine so if you look at our advanced traffic notice warnings you can get in and out of the city oh, wow. very easily <laughs> That's my technical notice. I yeah. love that. <laughs> technical notice. No, that's pretty cool, though. And um, I'm guessing as well, you must bring a lot of revenue into Southampton. And is there, do you like donate money to charity from the event? Yeah, so with the event, we've got, um, so it's not just us and our team, we've got mm. 850 volunteers who take part. So we oh, have wow. a, a small army that kind of comes out yeah. in the day, all clapping and cheering the runners on. They're all made up from local community groups. In the first few years, we spent quite a long time going around to scout halls, um, to rowing clubs, mm. to WI 
to charities, trying to get sort of everybody on board, getting mm. behind the idea that you're going to have some, you know, 10,000 people running past your door. Can you come out and come and sort of be part of it yeah, all? Yeah. So uh, we spoke to ABP and they donate uh, money to each charity and each group who takes part. So they're, oh, the, they're the ABP mile makers because they make every mile for the oh, running. Oh, so I love it. Very cheesy, but it I like is, my cheesy little It is things. cheesy. Yeah. It's like a good Stilton, that is. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I'll go for Stilton. Yeah. <laughs> So we, we've got all the charities that come out. We've got, uh, we're hoping this year, fingers crossed, we're going to hit the million pound mark for the amount of money raised for the city. Wow. Um, each year in terms of economic benefits to the city, we've got 10,000 runners mm. and they on average bring 2.2 um, spectators with them. Oh, okay. I don't know what the 2.2 bit's for, but yeah. I think if, you, if you're coming to do your first marathon, if you're coming back to the cities, you've got some yeah. students in the area. Yeah. Those who've been to Solent or Southampton who've then gone off and actually want to come back and see what mm. their university city is like, it's quite cool to be able to you know run around and see how the city's changed, see what the yeah, old yeah. haunts are like when you're here as well. So I love yeah, it's that. quite cool. But we reckon there's over a million pounds gets brought into the economy for the that weekend when they come down. Yeah. People stay, the hotels are all booked up. We've got people having coffees mm. and meals out and all the rest of it. So yeah, it's quite exciting. So this really has come down to the success of your network and your ability to get people on board. I've got a certain, um, how has someone phrased it previously? Someone said that I am like a hurdler who doesn't see the hurdles. So okay. where people see there's things that get put into the way. So we had uh, uh, quite a long conversation about the Itching Bridge in the first couple of years mm -hmm. about how we can't really shut the bridge because it's a major transport one. We did traffic surveys to see how busy it was mm. on a Sunday morning. I said, I want the bridge because if you cross the bridge, yeah, yeah, it's cool. you can see into Wollstone, you can yeah. see across the water, you cross the river. When you come back across it, you can see the stage and you can see the whole city's like we need to have the bridge mm. so it's just finding the right people to speak to and bring it all yeah, together yeah. really and Southampton's a fantastic city there's not we weren't going around asking for money from people we were yeah. saying how can we do this how can we make this work and I think if you're positive and you kind of know what you want to achieve and how you want to get there mm. if you show that you know working together as a team and a collaborative you actually make this happen which is quite cool so uh, I went to a thing recently with Dent and Daniel Priestley and he was talking about different mindsets yeah and he was talking about the visionary mindset yeah where basically you are just kind of on a level always thinking up here and how successful everything will be and you make it so and he would say that that is exactly what you're saying like no hurdles yeah you're just going to make it happen yeah you, you need to make it happen yeah if you want it to come to you and it, it, he's exactly right because i envisioned that finished gantry ten thousand people are lined up and for each year we do a different song for that like, the race day video oh, okay. and the first year we had uh, world in union and the yeah. idea was we called the video city in union because it's the first time we bought residents businesses Sort of six and a half thousand runners mm. in the first year all these volunteer groups coming together and for one day you could be a runner a volunteer you could be a business you could be a person come to start in your street mm. but for one day everyone's kind of sharing one yeah, big little yeah. dream and things oh, which is I quite cool that. so we had um city and union for the first year second year my little vision head went a little bit crazy and you know the elbow song one day like this yeah and it's uh, throw these curtains wide yeah yeah i had this stupid idea of putting curtains across the gantry okay and i thought if you're a spectator you you can hear the noise of all the runners, mm. the curtains are across, you can't see what's going on. And all of a sudden you'd kind of had the music blaring out live across the speakers mm. and they would pull these curtains back and there would be 10,000 runners down the avenue and it all looked fantastic. So we came to the big moment, everyone's all oh excited. I was the wrong side of the, uh, of the curtains, I was like, this is gonna look so cool for the spectators. Oh and there was gosh. two guys with poles getting ready to pull it and went, throw those curtains wide. One guy walked across beautifully and smoothly, just what we rehearsed and practice yep. the other guy was there going no oh my god <laughs> so we've got no. this curtain that was stuck oh, which he's no. trying to pull across then you see all these people in high vis jackets running across oh, to god. try and pull it it's getting caught they're going what are we doing the runners are about to be released like a 60 seconds time or whatever oh my god so there's me going no my vision and the dream yeah. and everything else but no one recognized did you ever feature curtains again uh, no <laughs> the curtains uh the curtains have been tucked away and hidden yeah, yeah. in my office never to be seen again i love it you're like those curtains were funny <laughs> okay so um there's obviously a lot of logistics here in terms of event planning so yes. would you say event planning is one of your strengths um, I think people planning is probably okay. more of my strength. So it's how you can get people together and you do it as part of it all. And the actual paperwork yeah. side of yeah. things, I'm not a paperwork fan. Yeah. I've got lots of people who are very good at paperwork. Um, we've got an unusual relationship in the fact that my sister Nikki works for me. So mm -hmm. the two of us are a brother-sister relationship. And you know when you've... Uh, no, well, have you got brothers and sisters? I do. You know when you can just do a look because you've yes. known someone for so long. Yes. You don't need to communicate. It's just your own kind of body <laughs> language and you can go, yeah, she's on board or she knows that. So we can yeah. do looks across rooms to just kind of... You're basically doing done. it through telepathy. 
that's what's <laughs> that's happening. Right. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. like, it's the brother sister telepathy yeah. that comes across. <laughs> yeah, but she's very detailed. So she's very good at the yeah. detailed stuff. I've got the big grand vision yeah. of, you know, make this happen. But then I've also I like the people stuff. I like meeting people, talking yeah. to people. And I think if you are a volunteerist in the corner of a street, or if you're the poor guy who's trying to pull a curtain across because yeah. somebody that wants curtains and a finished gantry, you know, yeah. everyone's part of the same team. And I quite like getting everyone all together as part of that and just yeah. you feel like you're one big team and we do a big huddle at the end of the day and the end of each event where we all come around together everyone links arms as you go through and this is from you know all the different marshals and everyone else and you go what was your favorite part of the day and you can just see it in people's eyes when they have like, their own little personal story yeah. so you know the poor chap with the curtain obviously had quite an embarrassing story but we just made him feel part of the team yeah. he was part of it, it didn't matter well and it's always got... the things like that you remember though isn't it yeah unfortunately yeah. you for, you for the wrong reasons <laughs> but for people who think it's funny it's like wedding days isn't it and yeah, it's exactly. like oh it's raining it's like horrendous rain but yeah. then like always becomes like a part of the but everyone's got their own unique story yeah, as well yeah. and because it's 13 miles around the city you can't physically be yeah, in yeah. you know every part at the same time so when you've got somebody who relates their story about how they helped a runner who'd mm. you know twisted their ankle or got through it all or a, a runner who was so exhausted but just kept on pushing to get mm. to that finish but you can kind of see all these different people's stories as part of it it's yeah. quite exciting really so how do you make this interesting year on year? Because I'm going to, you've had the curtains, we've but had the how curtains. do you innovate this event? So this year we're going green for the event. So oh, okay. we're removing plastic waste um, from all the t-shirts we're giving out at the finisher point. We don't have the plastic around the medals anymore as part of it, because it's all one use stuff previously. Yeah, so yeah. now if we can limit that amount, we're using cardboard for the boxes rather than plastic coming through. Yeah. And we're also working on a couple of different things for water to go through. So there's oh. a couple of options we've got. There's like a resealable plastic pouch that you can have. So lots of runners will have a cup have a sip and then throw it over their heads mm. or drop it on the floor and it has to get picked up by one of our mile markers yeah. the last couple of years we've been using plastic uh, recyclable plastic mm -hmm. and now we're trying to limit that amount to then having the pouches which then condense down more and can be reused okay. and we also have a look at some seaweed pouches which oh. is kind of a little bit hit and miss because basically you have a pouch made of seaweed mm. stick it in your mouth yeah yeah you can digest it and you basically eat the container that it's in it's like those balls right is it a ball that sort of bursts in your mouth that's right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and then I the seaweed then dissolves that. I don't know how it. I've it's seen quite that. cool, but we're, we're yeah. looking at to see if it's something you can put out for ten thousand runners, or whether it's yeah. something we can test as part of it all. But going green and um, trying to reduce plastic is something quite key. It's to so the important, and also when you're doing things on such a mass scale, you yeah, can exactly. have a huge impact. Yeah. So the last every year since we started, we've recycled the bottles every time. Yeah. So there's fifty, sixty thousand bottles have all been reduced. Uh, sorry, recycled. Yeah. And then we're working to actually get rid of uh, one of those bottles. The finishers will have their own uh, reusable plastic bottle at the end. Yeah. They can walk away with and use again time yeah. and time again. So going green, it's even good. though it's only one day well in the year, yeah. we can still do our bit and make our bridge be cool. Yeah. Starting with Southampton, but now you're looking into Winchester as well. Is this a new venture for you? But you must have key pins that you put in place to make this successful because you are one, but one man. I am with but one man. With a huge vision. Yeah. So how do you... So we've got something called the bus analogy, mm -hmm. which is if I got hit by a bus and I couldn't make it to the event, how are we going to make sure this event can continue, can, can run? Because as devastating as it be to my family and to my sister, to me, have me seen, you know, hit by a bus and the event oh needs God. to go on or the show must go on, as they yes. say. Um, so we sort of build a very um, in-depth event plan that just describes what everyone has to do. Everyone's got specific jobs they've got to mm -hmm. do as part of it all. And you go down right to the detail of what the person is handing out the cups or how many cups they need to have to put out. Because oh, wow. on average, you get 400 people per minute coming past you at the busy parts of the race. Oh, my God. So if you can imagine all these people handing yeah, out yeah. water as part of it all. You're going to get 400 cups or bottles or whatever else all lined up ready to rock and roll at wow. a certain period. So you've got to think in a lot of detail. Yeah. And that kind of big vision thing takes a lot of time to then put down to plans and to pictures mm. and then to then put into kind of, you know, bring it all together. But we've got some very key people who look after each section. So you've got the um, uh, ABP mile makers who look after them. So mm. they're the individual volunteers in their high-vis vest. Yeah. And you need to make sure that when they're out in the streets and you've got people closed in on the day, you want to make sure that you've got a nice happy face, smiley face, making sure they're part of it because yeah. they are your team for a day. So yeah, you go yeah. from one person to 850 people wow. for you know 24 hours, which yeah. is really exciting. But all of a sudden there's a lot of responsibility yeah. to that. So we build the layers up as part of it, which is quite cool. I love that. So I love it. Yeah, it's good fun. It's amazing. So Winchester's developing then. Winchester developing. We are year three of the Winchester okay. Half Marathon now as well, which is cool. Yeah. And we've um, 
well, it's one thing we're talking on about how we, you know, businesses develop and the ideas that pop up. I actually went to Winchester first and mm -hmm. wanted to do the Winchester half first because it's yeah. a smaller city in a smaller town and it's not the flattest of routes, I have to confess. Yeah, it's a yeah, hilly city. God, yeah. um, so it's just something that we've sort of built up over time of what we want to do, what we want to build up and, you know, areas we want to work in, really. Winchester yeah. and Southampton is where I went to school, where I grew up, where yeah. I lived. And it's just kind of a nice, nice part of the world, really. Oh, no, and it's nice to put places on the map and then build and build later or yeah. whatever. But it's the, these sort of cities so Portsmouth Southampton Winchester kind of little nucleuses of their own aren't yeah, they that's right yeah. so you really create a sense of identity and community for people yeah and that's, it's something nice to bring everyone all together for that one yeah. day like we, one day like this exactly yeah. <laughs> okay so how can people find out more and get involved in races what can where can they go and you can run you can volunteer you can be part of the event management team mm -hmm. for the day and can be part of it all it's all available through Reese Leisure okay. um, so we've got lots of opportunities there for them to get involved and I have a little present for you <gasps> I know I have a present for you too. Oh, me first, me first. Okay, you go first. Well, I don't know, it's exciting. Oh, well, you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be like, this is crap. I've got you, your very own. Oh. So I can spot you when you're out running and training for this one of my is events. Darling, you see. This, is, this is not really on brand colour, but I love it. <laughs> It, it suits you. It suits you. Oh, la, la. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's all right. I'm actually going to come and be a part of this. Awesome. Because I obviously I have run it for the last yeah. five years. Yeah, hey, I've but, tried um, to. Yeah, all I, those medals. Uh, I think maybe it's time for me to take it to the next level. <laughs> right, I have a gift for you. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much for this. I'm slightly nervous now. Okay. Do you remember how we first met? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do remember how we first met, yeah. and we were actually sober for this conversation as well. Yeah. So I've got what, no what, idea what, how we got into this track. What were we yeah. talking about? We were talking. Was it a golden donkey? Is that right? Close. Is it golden elephant? Close. It's a golden animal of some kind. It is a golden <laughs> elephant, a golden animal of some sort. Yes. So um, we were talking about golden T Rexes. T Rexes. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Again, it's extinct. I wasn't thinking yes. that far back. Yeah. So uh, I have. No way. Your very own. No way. Golden T Rex. That is cool. I am honoured. <laughs> this is fantastic. <laughs> this is going to go have pride of place in my yeah. office. There you go. And every time people come in, going what is that and I'll be able to show them my golden yeah. T-Rex from and Heaven the point Park. was about networking and saying something memorable because yep. we met probably like <laughs> four years three years ago maybe yeah it probably was actually yeah. and yeah. that was the first thing we ever talked about and I've got no no idea how we came onto this conversation no, no. but there it was are. fantastic but it does so make things memorable enjoy. in networking yeah. doesn't it and now this will make me memorable well I'm not as memorable as a golden T-Rex yeah, yeah, thank you it's true <laughs> thank you so much for joining us no worries today. thank you very much enjoy for the coffee T-Rex I will enjoy this thank you and uh, I'll see you at the marathon excellent good luck with your Training. Oh God, <laughs> thanks.